cross stitch is the art of turning a gridded pattern of pixels into a masterpiece of stitches. Let me show you how it's done. Cross stitch uses Ada cloth, which is specially woven with squares punctuated by needle sized holes. To get started, separate the pieces of your embroidery hoop and fold your fabric in half twice to find the center. The edges are prone to fraying and you'll be working on this project for a while, so either use a zigzag stitch or just plain old masking tape to secure the edges. The solid piece of the hoop has an extra little lip that should face towards the fabric while you sandwich the outer hoop over top of it. You might have to loosen the screw all the way at first to get it sandwiched onto the fabric. Use your fabric center mark to line up with the approximate center of the hoop and start tightening the fabric in the hoop as you tighten the screw. Notice how that lip on the inner rim really grips onto the fabric. Most embroidery floss has six strands, and for cross stitch you won't be using all of them at once. Untwist the center of a strand of floss, put your thumbs in and draw them apart, letting the ends untwist as you go. This is the easiest way to keep your floss from getting tangled. Thread the needle with the number of strands your pattern calls for, and bring the needle from back to front in the very center of your hoop. Don't make any knots on the back of your project, but rather leave about a one inch tail that you'll then secure with further stitches. Hold the tail in the back with one hand while bringing the needle diagonal across a square of the fabric through to the other side. Come from back to front again in an adjacent hole and then flip it over to ensure that that loop catches the tail in the back. What you've just made is a half stitch, one diagonal in the X, and we'll make several of these in a row before retracing our steps to complete the other half. Follow the pattern to know where to put the stitches, and in this first row, don't forget to catch that tail in the back. Reverse direction and complete the other diagonals, making the stitches into little Xs. Be consistent in the way the first half and second half of your stitches lean over the entire project so they look even when they're sitting next to each other. You can fill in entire areas with half stitches and then go back over them later. Once you get the hang of it, you'll notice you use both hands, one on the back and one to move your needle. And the bigger your hoop is, the more your fingers have to stretch. The trade-off is that a smaller hoop has to be moved around your project more often. Newsflash, your hands are really dirty. So you see how I'm holding the fabric around the edge of the hoop so that my fingers are only ever touching the back side of the fabric? That way you won't end up with a nightmare dirt ring later. You can stop and start sections of floss by weaving the needle through stitches on the back of your fabric. And don't bridge unstitched sections of fabric or the floss might show through on the front. Double check that you've crossed all your stitches and then look to your pattern, which might call for some back stitching. These are the outlines that really make your designs pop. They might go alongside stitches and they might go over top of them. Just think to yourself, two steps forward, one step back. When you're all done, you can take the project out of the hoop by loosening the screw and separating the two pieces. And then you can assess your nightmare dirt ring. See, I have a little bit on the front, but most of it's on the back where it won't be a problem. Hand wash your project with some color safe detergent in warm water and then lay on a towel. You can roll it up in the towel to squeeze out the extra water before letting it dry overnight. Then you can iron it between two towels using low heat and steam. We're gonna make our design into a pillow. So cut another piece of fabric that's the same size and sandwich them right sides together. Pin along the perimeter and use your sewing machine to stitch all the way around, except for one little space you'll use to turn it right side out. Use a chopstick or a pair of scissors or anything long and pointy to help shape your pillow as you fill it with batting. Then use a needle and thread to stitch that last opening shut. I like to use a ladder stitch, but a whip stitch would work just as well. Finish it off with a knot and then put your needle into the pillow and come out somewhere completely different in order to hide the tail. Now the tail will be inside the pillow and when I cut it off, you'll never see it again. Cross Stitch is an easy project to travel with because it's small and you can work on it in bits and pieces and it's also really fun and easy to make your own patterns using your favorite image editing software because it's basically just a low res graphic. And if you're looking for a first cross stitch project, check out our Ohm Sweet Ohm resistor chart kit. 
When you're done stitching, it makes a great electronics reference above your workbench or in your hacker space. Show us your cross-stitch projects in the Adafruit Flickr pool. Don't forget to subscribe here on YouTube.